representing Franchise Secrets, Eric Von Horn. If you're not a part of the Franchise Secrets Facebook group, what are you waiting for? It's FranchiseSecrets.com slash Facebook. I cannot believe how valuable this group turned out to be. When someone asks a question, the feedback is honest, authentic, very helpful, and it's from multiple perspectives. If you're not sure that you're getting the most accurate information about franchising, then check out the largest, most helpful Facebook group in all of franchising. Whether you're a Z, a Zor, a buyer, or investor, join our free Facebook group at FranchiseSecrets.com slash Facebook. Welcome to the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Eric Van Horn here on another solo episode. And today, what I want to talk about is a question that came up in the Franchise Secrets Facebook group. And someone said, really, I have a brand, a franchise as a franchisee, and I want to advertise it and I want to sell it. It's making profit. It's making a profit, but, um, but I want to sell it. So there's some good comments in there. Um, and I always love the comments that everyone uh, does and, and contributes to the Franchise Secrets Facebook group. But I want to talk about six ways that I've sold existing franchises myself personally, like my brands as a franchisee, six ways that I've sold. I'm a big fan of speaking from experience. And so that's what I figured I would do. And it got a lot of comments. And I think um, every franchisee out there should be thinking about selling, whether you are thinking about it actively or it's in the back of your mind. So hopefully this is gonna be helpful to you franchisees out there on eventually selling your brand and franchisors to see what your franchisees are thinking about and, and, and how you can help them either exit or move on or expand. And let me start with this. It's always an awkward conversation to go to your franchise. Let's see, let me paint the picture. You have uh, three units that you bought, three territories that you bought. You've opened up one and you're thinking about selling or maybe you've opened up two and you're thinking about selling. This is a, a challenging conversation that a franchisee would have with their franchisor. What do they do? Do they go and say, hey, I've got two open, I'm not gonna open up my third one because I want to sell. All of a sudden you go on like the golden child list at the franchisor, or at least not on their negative radar, and now you are on their radar as somebody that is checked out, not growing, and is going to not be around in, you know, in a year from now or two years from now. So that is the franchisee's fear. So that's why they just really don't say anything or engage the franchisor. Or, you know, this is what I did in, in, in one of the brands that I was a part of. I, I was thinking about selling. I was also thinking about expanding. And this, is, this has happened multiple times. And so this is why I like this, this type of conversation because I could sell or I could expand. And truthfully, for most of you franchisees out there, that's where you are. You're either gonna sell or you're going to expand. You're going to grow. And you want the franchisor's help both ways with that. So that was a conversation that I've had multiple times with multiple brands. Hey, franchisor, I'm thinking about selling or I'm thinking about expanding let's engage in conversation. What, what do you think? What are my options? Do you have another franchisee that's thinking about expanding or do you, uh, are you thinking about buying, expanding yourself as a franchisor or do you want me to expand? And if you do want me to expand, let's talk about how we can do that together. And now you're engaging them in meaningful conversation around expansion. So I love bringing expansion and selling up in the same conversation. Because again, it's happened both ways. I go into the conversation with those two options and sometimes I've sold and sometimes I've expanded. But let's, uh, let's talk about the six ways that I've used to sell franchises that I've owned as a franchisee. The, one of the, the probably most common is selling to neighboring franchisees. And it's the same conversation. It's like, hey, neighboring franchisee, what's your goal? What are you thinking about doing? And are you in expansion mode and you don't have enough territories? Are you in uh, thinking about selling? And so it's the same conversation that you could have with a franchisor. You want to have that kind of open communication with franchisees. And I'm comfortable doing that. 
And so, you know, the conversation is like, hey, if you ever think about selling, let me know. I'm interested in expanding and I might actually sell myself if the right opportunity came along. So I really um, like having that conversation with neighboring franchisees. And when I say neighboring franchisees, franchisees that are, you know, in a couple hours of you are your neighboring franchisees because you might have a franchisee. I'll just, you'll just use, um, uh, I was in Austin, Texas, and I had a lot of franchises in that market. And I was the master franchise for that market. So I know a lot of the dynamics of having 42 locations and some, some people expanding, some people selling. And let's say there is a, a group that's in College Station or they're in Waco or they're in Colleen Temple Market. And they are in a small market with two or three locations, two or three territories. And they, the grass is always greener. So they want to expand. Maybe it's Houston or, or Austin. And so I've had franchise, I've had conversations with franchisees about going from a small market to a large, larger market because all of a sudden the larger market is always more attractive when you're in a small market and vice versa. So, um, I'm not talking about your direct neighbor, but I'm talking about your neighboring franchisees. Think about it this way. Franchisees that are in your DMA. If you don't know what that term is, it's designated marketing area. It's really the radio or television footprint. So in call in, um, uh, Austin that looked like college station to Waco to partway to, um, San Antonio, um, going yeah, to, to, uh, to Colleen in that, in that market. So it was a wide market. So think of the DMA. Those are your neighbors. Anyone that if you have a group that gets together, maybe you meet once a year, those are your neighbors. So I would just have close relationship with all of them. Plus they might know somebody that is thinking about buying or they hear somebody through validation that's thinking about buying. And I know Franchisors don't like it when that happens, when, when validation happens and somebody hears about an existing unit for sale, but that absolutely happens. And if the people that are validating don't know about open ter or uh, stores that might be for sale or locations that might be for sale, it's never going to happen. So neighboring franchisees, I've, I've done that at least a handful of times. So that's number one. Um, number two, is biz by sell or biz quest or businesses for sale. There's a lot of broker, uh, broker, brokers out there that are, uh, broker websites out there. They're not brokers, but they're broker websites. And it's very inexpensive to go on there and list your franchise. Uh, so there's a couple things to that. One, you probably want to do multiple uh, websites. And I think if you do biz by sell, you have the option to do BizQuest and probably still biz businesses for sale. They're all kind of owned by the same company. So I would do as many as you can, but the big one is biz by sell or BizQuest. Put a good amount of information in there. If you want less leads and more quality leads, then put a lot more information in there. And I would also include, this is an existing franchise. This is a franchise that is owner operated or it's operated by, you know, by me, by a local, uh, local business owner. And here's why that's important. Franchisors will go on there or franchise consultants or brokers will go on biz by sell and they will put up a, an ad that says, Hey, I've got a car wash for sale. And really it's an unopened territory for a car wash franchise. So you'll get a lot of calls on that and you'll get brokers that call you on these things as well. So the more details that you can provide, the less uh, leads that you will get, but the higher quality of lead that you will get as well. So I, that just depends on you and the time that you have and, and whatnot. But I would suggest putting an ad up there, letting them know it is a franchise and be super clear that I am, I, Eric, I wouldn't put my last name, I, Eric, am the owner. I've owned it for three years or five years. And I'd be clear, this is, this is an, ex this, to be clear, this is an existing business that's profitable and cash flowing or, or you could say this is under, um, this is a business that is not profitable, but you can get into it at uh, a less cost, less all in than you would if you were to open it up from scratch. So you can get more leads by giving less information or less leads, higher quality, more interested people by giving more information. 
but I've done that. I've listed it on biz by sell. I would always do that regardless. Um, just to get it, just to get the word out there. Also, um, there's some side benefits to that too. Anybody that's thinking about a franchise is probably on biz by sell looking around and they're probably getting frustrated with different things. And so if they're actually looking for a franchise and they see that there's one for sale and it's an existing one, you'll probably get some traction off of that. Um, just another word of caution. It's so it's not easy to sell existing franchises or existing businesses. It's not, you know, super difficult, but it's not easy. It's not like you just put an ad up and it's sold like a car. So it's always takes longer than we want. And you probably aren't going to sell it for as much as you want because you're the seller, not the buyer. Um, so that's biz by sale. That's number two. And these are not in any order of like, this one's the best or this one's the worst. These are just literally what I thought about as I wrote them down of what I wanted to talk about. So number three is local broker. So this would be a local, a local business broker. And I don't want to name any names of, of business brokers of different companies because there's a number of different companies out there and it, they're really as good as the local broker. So it might be a national company that seems to be really good, but you're only as good as your local broker. So what I would do is just start looking at some of the local brokers, see who have businesses that have sold. And I would do it in the industry. If you're in the tax industry, find someone that has sold tax businesses before because they have a database of people that had looked at buying a tax business before, or if it's a smoothie place or whatever it is. So that's always a bonus if they have experience selling your type of business. Also, find out if they sold franchise brands before because that's a different animal in itself. So if they've sold uh, uh, your industry and franchises before, that's probably a pretty good indication that they can they can be of service to you. Now, and I've sold one. I sold one in College Station uh, through a business broker, through a local business broker. I'd listed it for sale, and that's how I got that one sold. Um, the other thing with that is different brokers are going to have different types of agreements. So just be careful in what you sign. They're probably going to want an exclusive. So that what that might mean, let's say you're, you sign an exclusive with a local broker and that broker um, sells that, but they never found the lead, but they sell it because the franchise or sold it. Well, they get commission if they're exclusive. So you might want to try to carve out that exclusive with that local broker to say, Hey, if you never talked to this lead because it came through the franchisor's website, do I still have to pay you? So that's an important little nugget to understand. All right. Franchisor, the franchisor, uh, they have a database like your brand, the brand that you own, the corporate office has a database. They want to sell it to their existing database and maybe somebody that didn't buy a new territory for whatever reason. So ask them to send an email out to their database and your market to see if they have any buyers. What they don't like doing is selling new franchisees that can buy an unopened territory. They don't really like get excited about selling them your existing franchise. So start to understand the dynamics of what they want to do and what they prefer not to do. So, um, but franchisors, um, especially if they have a resale department, get to know them and see what a really good price would be to, uh, to sell like a sellable price and just start to understand that, understand it before you have to sell as well. Understand why people buy existing when your particular brand versus buying a new, so you know how to market it. Um, so that's a franchisor. And then you, here's another one that I've done multiple times. I had a manager that I groomed up and then I sold it and I, and I had the books on, like I, I, um, I held back. I was the finance uh, person on that business. So manager bought it. Um, I knew that they know how to run, run it so that I had confidence in them to take that business and at least keep it at the same level of, of, uh, of, uh, revenue and profitability, uh, because they're the ones that have been doing it anyway. So I kind of like doing that. And there's multiple ways to structure it. Most of the time, a manager isn't going to have enough money to buy the whole thing out. But sometimes they have a family member or a friend that does, and you might need to plant that seed. Hey, why don't you partner with somebody 
that does have deeper pockets and you can run the business and they can finance the business. That way you don't have to finance it yourself as the seller. So I've seen that happen as well, where all of a sudden they find money and it's from a family member or a friend that believes in them and they know they believe in them, but they also know that that person has the skills and the ability to run the business because that's what they've been doing. So it's less risky for their friend that's financing it. So keep that in mind, but a lot of times you probably have to plant the seed. And so a lot of that with the manager, just like it is with neighboring franchisees or the franchise, or you plant that seed and, and you want to find that out before all of a sudden they go and start their own business or they become a competitor or they go and buy a, a, an unopened territory from the franchise or because that's happened to me as well, where I had an incredible manager and they did it themselves. I still love the guy, but he was no longer my manager and he was building a great business himself when he could have partnered with us or we could have sold them the businesses. So keep that in mind. And finally, Private equity. Everyone wants to sell to private equity. I've done it. I sold uh, 12 locations of solo salon studios to private equity, and it was a painful process. I Meaning, it's so much easier to sell to a a individual business owner versus having a, a, a data room with all of this. You know, the financials where you know they're much more. Um, a powerful and knowledgeable of financials than you are because that's what they do all day. They have a team of nerds with calculators and spreadsheets that are just ripping apart the numbers and you feel like you're at a disadvantage most of the time because you are, but they have deep pockets and they can, they can do things that, that you can't do as an individual owner. So I really like selling to private equity. It's not going to be in everybody's uh, best interest or it's not going to be in everybody's uh, ability to do that because very few brands do does private equity really get interested in, but that is something as a buyer, you want to know if private equity in the past has gone into that industry and if they have, what did they find attractive? And if they did find that attractive in what markets did they find that attractive? So you can build a business that's sellable to private equity at some point in the future. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have a franchise, you can sell to neighboring franchisees. You can list it on biz by sell and be the broker and sell it yourself. You can, you can have local business brokers that are knowledgeable of the market. Uh, franchises and your industry do it for you. You can rely on that franchise or because they have a big database of leads that have come through with interest in the past. You can sell it to a manager or you can sell to private equity. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Franchise Secrets podcast. Check out the Franchise Secrets Facebook group because that's where this question came from. And I'm um, going to hope that you find that useful as well. Thanks a lot. See you later. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Franchise Secrets Podcast. Whether you're watching or listening, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to whatever channel you're listening on. If you want my help with anything from buying a franchise to franchising your business, please visit FranchiseSecrets.com.